From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. As it celebrates 100 years of existence in South Africa, Ford Motor Company South Africa has announced it will invest 5.2 billion rand at its plant in Silverton to start producing plug-in hybrid electric vehicle Ranger models from late next year, while Anae Arnoldi attended the centenary celebrations. The latest investment by Ford will not only see its existing facility expanded to accommodate the unique chassis configuration of the plug-in hybrid Ranger, but also the construction of a dedicated battery pack assembly facility. Ford will be making changes to its welding equipment, robots, control systems, conveyors and skids, since an additional 500 kilograms of weight to the vehicle needs to be accommodated. The PHEV Rangers are destined for export to Europe, Australia and New Zealand, which will be the first time in two decades that the Silverton plant will be supplying vehicles to the Australian and New Zealand markets. This model will deliver more torque than any other Ranger model, thanks to a 2.3-litre Ford EcoBoost turbo petrol engine paired with an electric motor and rechargeable battery system. It will be able to drive about 45 kilometres without using fuel or producing tailpipe emissions. Ford Middle East and Africa Operations VP Ockett Berry tells us more about why the South African operations were chosen to manufacture these Rangers. First of all, I think it is the future right, of vehicle manufacturing. Um, and the plug-in hybrid fast is almost at the intermediate stage until you eventually one day go into a full electric vehicle. And because the, well, the employment, first of all, right in South Africa for our people is, is obviously paramount, important, very important to us, and our exports into Europe. So Europe, you know, from, from their um, requirements within the country, I think we all know, right, globally is the first real market that will move um, into plug-in hybrids and for that reason this naturally had to be one of you know, the first plants to convert into plug-in hybrid first and uh, we've also I think over the last five ten years right we have proven to Ford internally as well what we can do with regards to quality especially and the results that we see coming out of this plant has earned us that right you know to have Ford invest uh, this amount of money for the plug-in hybrid in this facility. The PHEV Rangers will provide all the towing and payload capability that is expected of a Ranger, along with pro power on board that enables customers to power their tools and appliances on a worksite or remote campsite by plugging them into power outlets that are embedded in both the cargo bed and the cab of the vehicle. Barry elaborates on his expectations for the local market and initial production quantities. I think plug-in hybrids definitely. If you look at what it brings you, the capability, not just to use it, you know, the, the, the battery itself to drive the vehicle around, but also for, you know, people that use tools or that want to go and use the vehicle to go and work remotely. You know, you've got that plug-in capability that you don't have to carry a generator with you. So I think from that, you're going to see a huge benefit in South Africa and the local market, definitely. I think we'll start, we'll start off in the, around about 30,000, you know, per annum. Um, and we've, we've looked at various scenarios, you know, but uh, we believe that it's going to grow significantly and I'm talking 60, 70,000 vehicles per annum, uh, easy. Ride-sharing and delivery company Uber recently celebrated 10 years of operations in South Africa, where the company highlighted its contributions to the economy and announced some new products and services on offer. Darren Parker tells us more. Since starting operations in South Africa in 2013, Uber has provided thousands of unemployed South Africans with the means to make a living. The company aims to make even more jobs available going forward, partly through a significant investment into development of the township economy in partnership with government. This is one of the big challenges that we're facing as a country. You know, you look at even the youth unemployment stats, you know, we've long breached 50 percent unemployment in that category i mean overall sitting at like 32 34 percent so as a platform business where that offers you know gig work flexible work as well i think we, we play a very important role in terms of the broader landscape of tackling this bigger problem you know it's a it requires different parties to play different roles you know as a platform you know we've created one million earnings opportunities you know since we've started in south africa and i believe you know as we continue to grow build out new use cases for consumers it creates that opportunity uh, for more earners to be able to participate and when i look at uh, you know from a geographic perspective 
you know, going from just, you know, Joburg and Cape Town to be able to be in, you know, almost 30, you know, 30 cities nationwide. Again, that, that money, that investment, you know, that demand creates new, new opportunities, whether it's, you know, from a merchant side to eater side to drivers. Uh, it, it's really important, I think, the role that we continue to play, and that's something that forces us to continue to innovate. You know, we can't rest on our laurels. Um, I think there's so much opportunity and the opportunity to bring in sectors that perhaps may not have been as transformed in terms of technology as well. Um, I, I really look at it, you know, uh, looking forward for, you know, even the next 10 years, I think we can begin to play an even bigger role in terms of reducing that bigger uh, gap when it comes to unemployment and underemployment. Government is really trying to address unemployment, especially youth unemployment. Uh, how do we go around that? Especially in the townships, right? Uh, you just have to take a drive to see how pervasive the problem is. Um, so for, for government, how is it that we can you know, step in and help and maybe help to mitigate this? At Uber, Uber Eats specifically, again, we run this platform that has this amazing ability to get as many people included or participate in the, in the economy. So you had a, you had a convergence, uh, you had a convergence really, really of two priorities. <coughs> One, addressing uh, unemployment, and two, really participating in this economy. So again, government came in and said, listen, we will help look for courier partner, fleet partners, we will help look at financing for these, uh, for, 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 for these uh, you know, tools of trade, motorbikes. Um, we will help in licensing uh, these, uh, these new couriers who are coming in. And on our side, great. If I can have a supply of couriers who are really, really highly trained, for sure, we will commit a lot of money. Like I said, 200 million rands over, th uh, over three years. We will commit a lot of money in making sure that we develop the township market. Arguably, the biggest announcement of the day was that Uber would be introducing an electronic scooter fleet to operate its new same-day delivery service, Uber Package. The e-scooters will feature a unique battery swapping capability, allowing riders to swap out their batteries within seconds rather than having to wait for them to recharge. The new electric scooter delivery vehicles will come in two forms. The medium speed version has a 1.5 kW battery with a 55 km per hour top speed and a range of about 90 km while the other will have a 4 kW battery and a range of about 110 km per charge, reaching a top speed of 95 km per hour. The big announcement today, you know, was around the, you know, introduction of our first, you know, green product in South Africa, bringing in electric bikes, but not just electric bikes, you know, we brought in smart swapping technology, you know, this is a global first as well um, in terms of, you know, our business and, you know, really this this industry, you know, we uh, announced today that Uber Package uh, will be becoming 100% electric, you know, we're starting in uh, Cape Town and moving over to Johannesburg and uh, hopefully, you know, take over uh, nationally. But the real importance of this is that we've got a very ambitious goal. 2040, we will become a zero emissions platform. So that includes all lines of business. So Uber Eats, Uber for Business, Uber itself. We need to make that transition to ensure that you know we play our role. Uber as a platform, I mean, uh, as a technology provider, you know, we don't own the cars, etc. We've looked at our responsibility to be beyond our four, you know, four walls. It's around how do we help drivers to be able to to transition to you know electric vehicles. You know, how do we help? For example, merchants to move to more sustainable packaging, etc. So this is all part of this global mission, and it's not about just the West, you know, Europe, America. We really need to play this role in Africa. You know, we showcased it. You know, we made our African declaration earlier this year, and I think six months later, we're in Kenya launching electric bikes. And in South Africa today, you know, um, this is the start of our journey in terms of sustainability. Several other new products were introduced at the event as well. One of these new products is a geofenced food ordering product called Uber Live that allows customers to order food and drinks while at sporting events, concerts 
and music festivals. It gives you this ability to go to a either is it an event, uh, but larger gives you the ability to sit in a set venue and be able to order and interact with Uber just like you would at home. And like I said in the presentation, the the use cases are so numerous. And the ones that excite us are the stadiums. I mean, the ability to just order food from your stand in the stadium, get that notification, and all you do is just pick up your food and come back. Um, I just in kind of solving the nightmarish logistics around people lining up at half time, you missing half the game, and so on. Um, and again, just giving you that ability just to cut all of that, uh, uh, all of that lag time that you don't really need. Uh, very, very exciting. The ability to do it in airports, uh, at concerts. Um, so again, as we kind of think about the use cases about this, we, we see lots of legs on this. Uber also introduced a new subscription service model called Uber One which allows customers to have access to Uber's offerings in one place for 500 Rand a year or 50 Rand a month. This allows subscribers to get free deliveries on eligible food and grocery orders as well as a 0% service fee on eligible orders. In the past we tended, although we were one platform, we tended to run the company as two separate lines of business, all with their own management structures, strategies and so on. So not really taking advantage of the power of the platform. So Uber Eats had its Eats Pass, which you know we, we, we had a little membership program for us that used to run. Uber Rides had Uber Rides, uh, uh, a Rides Pass, which used to run separately. But because we are all on one platform and there's this opportunity now to use, to leverage rider, uh, uh, rider customers uh, from each side and for the the, the rights business to leverage its customers. We've brought this into one membership program called Uber One, right? Uh, and more, rather than just looking at a straight discounts, right? We're really looking at this and becoming sort of a, lifestyle tool, uh, a lifestyle tool that people use in their everyday lives, right? So the way we've, the way we've designed the, uh, the, 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 the incentives, um, for, for you to use uh, to use this package, I mean, uh, we will give you cash back on your Uber rides. Uh, we will suspend, especially for those people who've got families uh, who tend to order a lot on these things, we will suspend certain types of fees, delivery fees and service fees. We want to also make sure that we lift up to our promise. One of the things that we always get is, ah, you guys take too much, uh, to take too long to deliver, you know, uh, you've got a time, it never comes. So we hold ourselves accountable. If we don't meet that time, we, we pay for it, essentially, right? Well, which does force us to get our standards up, for, for, for sure. And making sure that if you are on this membership, uh, on this membership platform, you do derive some value, uh, some value for it. Uber also announced the launch of Uber Store Pickups, which would enable users to book a delivery person to collect any prepaid items from any store. In addition, Uber is expanding Uber Van to Cape Town, its luxury rideshare offering Uber Black to Durban, and the addition of Reserve Airport Pickup for its Uber X, Uber Comfort, and Uber XL rides. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.